Part of the reason for putting this group together to begin with, the Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra, was to shine a spotlight on what's happening here. I mean, there are so many places, I think, where there are great creative musicians doing awesome things and people are completely unaware of it. So I wanted people to realize they don't always need to look to New York City for beautiful, creative, high quality music. Uh, there are a lot of really amazing musicians doing awesome things right here. And that's what the band is about. Uh, it's an opportunity to feature a lot of great Iowa musicians, like monster musicians that honestly, if we're living in a bigger city, we'd be getting work all the time. I love the fact that this band showcases Iowa composers. I mean, obviously Mike's music, but also uh, the music of John Rapson, the music of Bob Washett. I've got a few pieces in the book. Um, so the fact that it's all homegrown is really exciting, and I'd like to be able to present that on a, to a wider audience. I'd like to be able to get the music out, out of state, play some other places. But the bottom line is, as long as I can continue playing with these musicians, this music, I'm happy. Yeah, the Fertile Soil Suite was inspired by me moving back to Iowa, uh, getting this job at the University of Northern Iowa, and coming back home, I grew up in Iowa, and reflecting on what it means to be an Iowan. What are the things that are uniquely Iowan? And some of the things that came to mind are, well, what everyone thinks of us nationally as, as the first state uh, in the nation to caucus during the presidential primary season. Um, the fact that we're in the Midwest here and sometimes overlooked, ignored in the middle of the country. Um, I think about all the farms as you, as you drive around Iowa and look around the state. Uh, and I think about the history of the state and the people indigenous to the land that we're now living on. So those were some of the things that generated these individual parts. The first movement battleground is just really intense and just has a lot of demand, both physically and mentally. I find myself completely just exhausted <laughs> by the end of playing that, um, and both physically and mentally just, just drained. Every four years, Iowa gets all this national attention and all these media folks and campaigns and candidates descend upon our state and people pay attention to us for this window of time and then sort of forget about us for another four years. Uh, but that, that kind of um, tension and dissonance is reflected in the, in the music for Battleground. It features solos by Christopher Mertz on the soprano saxophone and Dave Rezik on the trumpet. Part two, Iowa, is inspired by melodies of tribes that are indigenous to our state. So the, the name of the state, Iowa, comes from a Native American tribe. And of course, the Sioux are indigenous uh, to Western Iowa. So I listened to a bunch of field recordings in the archives of the Library of Congress and found some really interesting melodies that I wanted to try to incorporate into this piece. So there are some of those, those melodies from the field recordings and some atypical ways of harmonizing them. Um, I think you'll you hear a little bit of kind of the complicated history there um, surrounding you know people whose, whose land we're on and uh, all of the complications that, that go along with that. And this was an opportunity to showcase some instruments that you don't normally find in the jazz ensemble. So Robert Espy, in addition to being a great saxophonist, uh, is a violinist in the Des Moines Symphony. And so we have him playing violin on this one. And the bassoon makes an appearance in this piece as well, played by Nolan Schrader. So you get some different, more orchestral colors kind of mixed into uh, part two.
Yeah, the recording session itself uh, was a great day. It was, it was a joy to hear this music finally come together after so much time. Obviously, we had a global pandemic that kind of messed up our plans a little bit for the initial premiere of the piece and the recording of it. So to be able to finally get together and make it happen was, was a real joy. Uh, the band is made up of friends and, and people I respect, people I've made music with for a long time in Iowa. 
Many of us go back to our days in Colossus Central, which was a, a big band I had when I taught high school in Iowa. Um, but then we brought some new people into the fold as well. So a bit of a reunion, you know, playing with former teachers of mine, former classmates of mine, people that I've gigged with across the state, and uh, a couple of people I've met even more recently. Boy, there's so much, you know. I mean, one thing is getting a chance to play with so many former students. Um, you know, teaching at UNI, a whole bunch of the guys that are playing in the band and gals that are playing in the band are, are former UNI kids. Um, and it, it does my heart a lot of good, you know, to see them out there and hear them playing so well together. Um, that's really exciting. I've loved Mike's music for so long and it's a, it's a great joy to play that music too. It's just so unbelievably challenging yet rewarding. It's just, it's just this beautiful intensity that he has in his compositional style. And I just really appreciate that as a musician, and I appreciate that as a player, and I just appreciate it also as a, as a listener. Like you guys are saying, you're having a lot of fun listening. It's, it's, it's fun to listen to the rest of the group. You know, I'd do anything for Mike. I'd walk through fire for Mike. I just think the world of him. Um, in fact, the, the kind of nucleus of the band, Mike uh, drew on bass and Dave on drums, and I have a quartet together called Christopher's Very Happy Band, and that band launched roughly the same day as the previous incarnation of this band. We had our, both had our first rehearsals the same day. I think we met early and did the quartet and then had the big band rehearsal afterwards. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I will play with Mike in any and all contexts. Part three is called Hog Heaven, and this is meant to be kind of the fun, light-hearted piece in the bunch. Um, hog Heaven, the title might seem somewhat obvious, but we've got a lot of hogs in Iowa. Uh, we raise about one-third of the nation's hogs. We produce a lot of pork. Uh, this features the trombone section. We've got three trombone soloists, Anthony Williams, Rich Med, and Joel Nagel kind of trading ideas. The whole piece starts with, uh, with Anthony Williams playing with the plunger, which he does so well. And uh, it's inspired by a memory I have as a kid, being in the car, uh, passing a hog farm, and my dad turning back to uh, my brothers and sisters and I and saying, hey, watch this, honking the horn and watching all the pigs like run across the field and just laughing like for hours about it as a kid. So hopefully the, that kind of joy and uh, humor is captured in this piece.
Yeah, the, the inspiration for a piece can come from almost anywhere, and it's come from different places for me over the years. Certainly one of the biggest motivators is when somebody's paying you to write something, and then you find in inspiration pretty quickly. But when it's just your own creation, something that you just want to do, um, in this case it was really helpful to have the Iowa Arts Council grant as sort of the thing to set a deadline and to say, okay, I actually am going to do this. Otherwise it's just sort of a big idea in my head that doesn't get doesn't get realized so I was really grateful for that um, which kind of forced me to do it you know it's hard to get this many people all together to rehearse play gigs and stuff so when we can do it we all make it count like we show up with our a game and I think that's that's really the biggest joy for me is getting to play with just monster musicians great composers yeah the dynamic between the composer and the soloist and a jazz composition is one of the most uh, exciting and interesting things about the process to me. Because as the composer, I have control over certain elements, but I really have to relinquish that control and hand my piece over to the soloist when it's time for them to improvise. And it's part, it becomes a part of the composition. Uh, and that is really fun to me. That's, that's one of the things that's the most inspiring when I'm 
creating the music is imagining some of my favorite musicians uh, from around Iowa, you know, their sound, their style, how can I best kind of put them in an environment to do their thing, you know? So I try to create these frameworks where they're able to continue the narrative of the piece that I've established at the beginning, but really bring themselves into it creatively. It's fun to listen to the rest of the group. There's so many moments when we're playing that I'm listening to other people do these amazing things. And I'm like, oh, I have my own job to do, you know? <laughs> and so that, yeah, it's, it's an incredible group. It really is. Part four is called Flyover, and it is inspired by, I guess, feelings of, of often being overlooked or ignored as the state in the middle of the country. And part of the inspiration for putting the band together to begin with was to shine a spotlight on what we're doing in Iowa, a place where people might not expect a lot of highly creative and beautiful things to be happening artistically. So I really like that kind of idea or vibe or concept to the last movement of the, the work. And it's just so much fun. The way he wrote like the, the exiting outro shout chorus is just, it's so tremendously fun to play. And it's just a lot of energy. You guys probably heard that earlier. It's just like, you just get after it. It's a lot of fun. I'm just so grateful to have, have this band that's willing to play this music. It would just, sometimes it's challenging. Um, but they're, they're always game for the challenge. They always seem to embrace that challenge and bring themselves to the music, which is, to me as a jazz composer, the most important piece of it, is how do I get these unique musical personalities uh, into my creative vision and, and for those things to come together and produce what you're able to hear now. None of us are really doing this for the money. We're doing it for the love of the music, and I hope that comes out in the recording. Uh, this, as an art form, as a way to play with great musicians, uh, share share a love for this this art. Uh, that's that's what I hope people can take away from it. I hope that everybody listening to this finds something that they enjoy in there. You know, I, my the idea is that each piece could stand alone as its own statement, but hopefully as a whole you get this kind of zoomed out picture of this is what Iowa is, this is what we're about um, creatively and you get a pretty good idea of, of the musical personalities of the band as well as you hear all these different soloists bring themselves to the music.
Thank you.